Fly your fair nation. Fly your fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Um, Dumb Sugar is not here tonight. She's actually in Jamaica, but I, Pointless, am here. Um, I wasn't here last week, um, but I do have a bunch of topics from last week that I wanted to discuss that are still relevant. Like, for the fact that Diana King got married, that was a bunch of songs by her that you may or may not know. Um... Okay, so not last week, the week before, Diana King got married to her violinist. Um, and they've been together, well, they've been playing music together for like a really long time. I think from 2007? Yeah, 2007. They've been together about 10 years musically. I don't know about relationship wise because like I've been looking online and you can't find anything. <laughs> like I'm checking her Wikipedia page and it's saying it's updated. And I'm like, who's updating this? Because there's nothing on there that says she's married. Um, crazy though because I follow her on Instagram she actually made a post saying it was a picture of their hands with their rings and I was just like oh my gosh like I completely like freaked out and um I don't know like that post was just like it touched me like I even made a comment on it I was just like oh my god like I got like teary-eyed because ladies 40 years old like we were just talking about this the other day how she just came out not that long ago I mean, it's been a few years, but still, like, considering how long she's probably known that she is lesbian or whatever it is, but, you know, she actually coming out and then it's like, yo, <laughs> you went and got married. Like, that was so dope. And her post was just basically saying something like to the extent of, as I'm writing this, my hands are shaking because, you know, for so long, basically, I've lived this secret life and da 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 Ooh, excuse me you know the whole shebang of living in the closet or whatever and then her wife actually updated her post also and <laughs> was saying that for a while she wanted to keep it a secret and she was wondering why am I keeping this a secret it's the same brainwash of this isn't okay you know what I'm saying and it's like visibility is vital like it's <laughs> like letting it be known like let it not closeting yourself like that shit is important because you closeting yourself makes other people who feel like it's wrong think that you think it's wrong as well like not even about shame or anything like that it's just like I live this life but I'm not proud of this life like one of the songs I played is actually called proud also is by her but it was just like one of those things that I just I don't know. <laughs> it was just, and it was so cute. Like their comments back and forth on their page. I was just like, oh, like she, Diana King actually commented on her wife's page and said, um, what's the song there? Said, all of my talk, y'all make them. <laughs> and I was just like, Ray. <laughs> she actually liked my comment. Groupy. But um, I thought that was pretty awesome. And it was funny because I was like going through their Instagrams and I kept like running into this girl's page named Kat. And I remember a few years ago, a friend invited me to this art mixer and was like, oh yeah, my friend Kat's throwing it. You're going to, actually, I don't even remember if he said her name. He just said, my friend is throwing it. You're going to love her. Da -da -da. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Now I haven't like kicked it with this guy in like forever. So I was like, how do you know what I'm going to like? Dude, when I say I was captivated, like, when she started, like, her music started playing because, like, they had a whole bunch of things going on. Live art. It was, like, a fire blower. <laughs> um, it was it was just a lot of things going on. Somebody made, like, bongs out of Hennessy bottles. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of different, like, artistic stuff. There's paintings, sculptures, live painting. And they had live music, different bands and, you know, spoken word and stuff. When she got up there, like, I didn't even know it was her because I had, like, wandered off. I was <laughs> looking at different rooms and stuff. And then, like, I heard her music. And I was just like, what? And this is some, like, coming straight from Kingston, Jamaica. I said, wait. And it's funny because I had seen her walking around. I was just like, she gay? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> so she went on the mic and she was sick. I was like, ooh. Like, and she, like, she's Jamaican. <laughs> Jamaican as fuck. Like, accent and everything. Like, she's Jamaican. And I was listening to her. And I was just like, oh, my. Like, I was just, like, in a trance. I remember texting Twin. And I was like, oh, my God. There's this girl. And she's so awesome. Da, 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 da. Whatever, whatever. And so it was like, oh. And I was like, oh, and get this. Her name is Kat. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's funny. Fast forward to, like, two years. I ended up running into her at Forever 21. I was just like, oh, my gosh. Your name is Kat CHR. She was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. And she was like, oh, hey, you know, bless, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, 
now that I'm seeing it, it's just like, oh, they're, she's on the label, think like a girl, like with Diana King. And I was just like, that is like small world. Like, what are the odds? But I just thought that was pretty awesome. And I was just looking at like all their interactions and like all the things. Like, you look at their page and they look like they're best friends. Like, Kat and, um, not Kat, <laughs> Kat's talking about me. Um, <laughs> Diana King and her wife. But I just, you know, it's one of those things where you, Say you're comfortable with yourself and you're okay with the life that you're living, but you know that due to, like she said, the brainwashing in society saying that this isn't right, this isn't okay, then you automatically think, I can't be out and open and express myself as freely as I want to. But, I mean, imagine having anxiety at 40 plus years old and not being able to, like, cope with that because society, the society you grew up in is, like, that don't make sense. Like, that's that's not that's not rational. Like, it's not logical, so it doesn't make sense. And it's like there's also emo- emotional logic, which you know, it's something like you feel something and you can rationalize it based on an action or something else that like it's just how you feel. And I don't know how it is in other Caribbean islands, but like being Jamaican, like <laughs> it's like what feelings are go? Like, what is? <laughs> What is the point? Like, if it's not making you money, it's not moving forward in life. It's kind of like, don't dwell on that. On that topic, you talk about, like, the kind of work that, as a Jamaican, stereotypically, what you, what they direct you to do. Like, you say you go be a nurse, go be a teacher. It's like, <laughs> those are the options, and that's it. Like, you, you can't go nowhere else. You go be a doctor, you go be a lawyer. That's fine. But the minute you say something like, I want to be... A photographer or want to go paint it's like what that's a hobby why are you doing that you know what I'm saying I told um one of my parents that I wanted to do psychology and <laughs> they asked me why and I was like you know because it's important to know like what it is that people feel like some people have problems understanding how it is they feel and you know they need someone to help them sort it out this this and this and it literally was like oh you want to do this based on feelings <laughs> I was just like Okay, but what's so wrong about that? And it's one of those conversations that you really can't win the argument because when somebody's stuck in their ways for God, you know how long, like, it's kind of like, okay, this is me talking to a brick wall. Nothing is going to get through. And even on a subject of psychology in general, like, not even just on a subject of black people, like Caribbean people in psychology is like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, you want to go see a psychologist for what? You're mad? You're crazy? Like, what's wrong with you? And it's not necessarily that something is wrong with you. It's just you might need a little assistance sorting things out. And it's this stigma that's like it's common in so many black homes. Like it's not just Caribbean. It's black people in general because the first thing they say is white people. <laughs> like only white people do that. Only white people have anxiety. Only white people have mental disorders. Only white people have, you know what I'm saying, like depression and things like that. And that's not realistic. There's so many people of color that are living with these things. And whether it's shame or not knowing or not understanding, not having support, they're not able to deal with these. I mean, you don't always have to resort to medication when it comes to psychology. Like, you can talk to someone, express your feelings, and it helps. (laughs) And, like, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And I'm one of those people that, like, as I'm growing, I'm unlearning so many of these like backwards ways of thinking. And you can't really say anything to your parents or like, you know, the older generation about this because it's something that is ingrained in them. Like for all these years of their life is literally, it's a routine. You get up, you go to work, you make money, you provide for your family, continue with life until you're dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You take care of them good enough. They can grow up and take care of you in old age. And it's a cycle continues. Like there's no, like you don't, do like when you talk about career they think about something that makes money like it doesn't matter if it's something you love you can hate your job because your thing is at the end of the day you clock out you go home that's it <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you don't but I mean if you're doing the same job no matter if it pay you $50 an hour it's still a job if you don't actually care about it. if it's not something that you're passionate about it's not something that you can say you put yourself into like this is something that you can get replaced any second because it's not yours. And <clears throat> in some cases, it's like that even in some careers. But at the same time, it's like if you have your own, like, let's say psychology, if you have your own practice, 
nobody can't put you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You rent your building. If I mean, and in this day and age, it looks like you can <laughs> have a practice from home because they have like um, all these apps and everything where you can text or call or video call a psychologist or email them and they're right there at your fingertips. So, I mean, you don't even need a building necessarily. Some people are more comfortable with laying on the couch or, you know, might not be more comfortable with that. So they have all these options now. So it's like, they think about doing nursing and teaching because people always need education. Somebody always getting hurt. So these are jobs that's always in demand. You always get paid. You always get hired for this. But I mean, some people don't have the patience to deal with, you know, other people's children and being a nurse. Because like, funny enough, when I was younger growing up in Jamaica, I wanted to be a nurse. Like, I don't know why I wanted to be a nurse. I don't know who I knew that was a nurse, but I wanted to be a nurse when I was in Jamaica. Somewhere along the line, that changed, and I wanted to be a teacher. Then I came to America, <laughs> and this little boy picked up a whole desk in the fourth grade and threw it at the teacher, and all she did was say, oh, my God, and ran out of the room to go call the principal. And I was like, wait, what? Like, he can get away with this, for real? <laughs> like, you're not going to beat him? Like, you, like, no, just... And it's not even just about being able to beat the kids, it's just the lack of discipline. I feel like some teachers, I'm not going to say a lot or all, some teachers really just show up for the check because it's a job, it's always going to pay, T people are always going to need teachers. It's one of those things that it's it's a never-ending cycle. Like, you're always going to be in demand for a teacher, even if it's an assistant teacher, like a substitute teacher. So when they have situations like that and you put these teachers in environments where the kids aren't necessarily eager to learn or <clears throat> have a background where the parents are involved or whatever the case is it's like certain kids get left to the wayside and that's not fair to them but at the same time you don't know what's going on and <clears throat> if they don't have that kind of attention at home and they're not getting it at school it's like you don't know what happens because you talk about psychology and you talk about abandonment and you talk about like depression and things and you see there's so many different signs of depression like I remember someone said to me the other day like asked me if I was okay because I'm not on social media as much as I used to be like <laughs> um and I feel like that's that can be looked at as an attribute of so many different things like oh you're in a relationship oh you're you know like so many different reasons why I'm not on social media as much anymore because I used to post all the time. I used to like always be on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, like all three, heavy rotation, Tumblr, all of the above. Now I'm just like, I'll pop up here and there and I check in and I see what's going on. But it's not even necessarily that something is wrong. Like I feel so much better than I have in the longest while. It's like, I don't have to put up a facade for anything. I don't have to like pretend to make myself feel better. Like, oh, I look happy in this picture. Let's post this. So... <laughs> so it's one of those things where you you see people posting all the time and they look great and they're doing all these things they're partying all the time and it's like yo life good life sweet everything crisp but no <laughs> you know what I'm saying different people medicate differently like I remember a time where I was like mad skinny and everyone's like yo you look good da -da -da. it's just like Mm, I don't eat, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And people don't, like, attribute certain things to, like, the reality of it. It's just an assumption of, oh, you must be started working out or you must be, you know what I'm saying, like, you're getting fit or whatever. It's it's never the deeper end of it because a lot of people like to scratch the surface on things and they don't go deeper. And it's the same thing with, like, like I said, like, being Caribbean. Like, you talk about, I don't feel well, I have, I'm depressed. And someone's like, depressed about what? Like, I hate that people ask you that question. Like, what do you mean depressed about what? Like, <laughs> you don't have to ask it so aggressively. And that in turn makes the person that feels depressed or isn't sure if that's what it is because a lot of people self-diagnose. It might not might not even be depression. It, I mean, it very well could be, but you self-diagnose or you feel like someone's going to judge you because of the way they respond. And it's like, okay, I'm shutting down, you know? And then that happens ever so often. And then it just becomes a continuous cycle of just shutting down and keeping things to yourself. But like I was saying, like I've minimized my use on social media because for the most part, like that shit is tiring. <laughs> like it's one of those things where you see all this crap that's going on in the real world. And then people are still just, you know, 
phony online and it's, it's no substance like it's great for what it's intended for networking you know meeting people working getting your name out there but the social portion of it like a lot of people I've realized literally well I shouldn't even say realize because it's one of those things that's always been there but it just became more evident to me a lot of people use it just just to be nosy like they just want to know what's going on with other people so they can talk about it. it's not necessarily that they care about you specifically and that sounds sad but I mean it's the reality of it but I don't post as much but I'm in a such like much better place mentally and emotionally and I just don't talk about it on social media because it's like what's the point you know what I'm saying like the people who know me like can see the growth or can see the change and if it's something for them to be concerned about they'll be like hey are you good like you know what I'm saying but <clears throat> I was saying something about self-diagnosing and it's very common because <clears throat> like if you're familiar with like symptoms of like depression or bipolar disorder or anything like that you can always sit down and say okay I have tick 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 all three of these and I can say that I'm depressed you know I'm saying like I'm one of those people that I (laughs) self-diagnose like I'll be quick to be like oh my gosh I'm having a bad day this this has to be from something and I'll self-diagnose and then try to solve it on my own instead of like reaching out and it's like I said it's part of that brainwashing like go to a psychologist for what like no I'm not crazy (laughs) you know what I'm saying and I kind of hate that word crazy because so many people use it incorrectly. Like it's not crazy. It's just, it's different. And so many things are different. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong or it's negative, but when you self-diagnose as opposed to actually seeking help, it, for some people it works. If they have like an open, clear mind and they can actually see what they're doing and understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, it's fine. But some people, it becomes a thing like, okay, I can deal with this. I can deal with this. And it ends up being like denial, like, or they'll try to talk themselves out of it to say, okay, I think I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. And then there's the whole speaking things into the existence, blah, blah, blah. speaking things into existence where you're like, okay, I know something's wrong, but I'm going to make sure that I'm okay. I'm just going to talk about this. And I'm just going to, and I'm not saying either one is wrong, but when you grow up with like an environment where that's like, shunned basically it's kind of like do I really want to do this like and I know people who've done therapy and do it in private (laughs) like literally like two or three people know they go to therapy and even that in change they have a problem with because I remember (laughs) a friend that changed therapist and was like I don't know if I'm being honest with my therapist because you know I haven't cried in front of her and I started laughing because like if you know that you need to cry in order to get whatever it is you need to get out, then cry. And I'm one of those people where, like, for the longest while growing up, like, crying, not, I'm not going to say it wasn't allowed, but it was one of those things that's like, why are you crying? Well, I'm going to get something for crying for. Like, crying wasn't something that was, like, acceptable <laughs> when I was growing up, like, as a kid, though. And that's like living in Jamaica with my dad. I've never seen my dad cry. And... When I came here, my mom, like, cried for everything, like, every little thing. Like, we got hurt. She's, like, hugging us and crying. And, like, me and my brother would be like, yo, she's been around these white people too long. What's wrong with her? You know what I'm saying? It's like she's just expressing emotion, and that's okay. But the mentality that, you know what I'm saying, you're expressing these emotions for, quote, unquote, no reason, is it's it's damaging, for one, because then you're bottling your emotions, and you don't know how to express it. And... For two, it's also with people that are, like, happy. Like, I remember me and Twin (laughs) were talking about this, how, like, she smiles a lot. And me and her girlfriend are always, like, we don't, we look very serious all the time. So one night we were out somewhere and she was just smiling. (laughs) We were just looking at her like, what are you smiling for? She's like, because I'm happy. What do you mean? And then we made the joke, say, you know, if you was in Jamaica, I'm going to ask you if you're fool-fool because you just a smile. So, and it's like, these things are absurd. So it's like, as you grow older, like, people who you know are of Caribbean descent or of these backgrounds where these things aren't quote-unquote normal you have to unlearn these things because you recognize it as a problem like these things are problematic and you have to train yourself to be like okay 
it's okay for me to cry when something bad happens and I'm overwhelmed and whatever the case is, it's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to smile. It's okay to like, you know what I'm saying? Express yourself. And so many people, like even still to this day, don't understand the concept of that. And that's why I've always like made the joke, like I can't date a Jamaican, like man or woman. I can't date them because I'm going to end up going to prison because the next minute I'm going to say something and it's, wait, like, what? What do you mean? Why am I crying? Like, you just, <laughs> something hurt. Like, ouch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, life happens. But it's just, it's very problematic. So, I mean, like I said, I'm on learning these bad habits. <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a process. It's a journey. And I feel like, so many people are going through this like not even just based on my own like circle but people outside of that because I've mentioned this like in like a random setting and somebody overheard me and was like oh my gosh and it's like like in a sense you kind of feel like oh good I'm not the only one but since I was like damn you too like that's not okay like you know what I'm saying it's not okay and I've just been like trying to you know like be more accepting of the way I feel about things instead of bot like even if I don't verbally express it like I don't try to stifle it as much anymore like I used to have a diary which is funny I used to have a diary I used to write like all the time all the time just write everything how my day was and there wasn't ever really like any real emotion like as I got older I started writing like about feelings, <laughs> you know, like talking about feelings, how I feel and that helps. And, you know, like just, I mean, just accepting like, okay, I don't feel well today. I need to disconnect from everything. Like, you don't understand, like I play solitaire and I literally sit and just like clear my head and just play solitaire and I'm okay. Like it just gives me time to disconnect and I organize whatever the hell is going on in my head. I rationalize because I am one of those people that, like, I feel something, I express it. But it usually comes out, like, kind of skewed because it's jumbled up and doesn't get time to, like, be processed properly and delivered properly. So, like, I'll feel a way about something. And logically, I know it doesn't make sense or it's not going to come out right. But emotionally, I'm like, no, this has to get out. Like, I have to say this or I have to, you know what I'm saying? So... That's why, like, I know some people paint for that same reason. Like, you grab a color and I feel this right now and it just ends up being something else. Like, even unfinished pieces. Like, I have a few of my own where I'll start something because I feel a way and, like, I'll paint or I'll, you know, sketch something. And then it's like, okay, before I can even finish completely, like, I feel better. I've, you know what I'm saying, talked myself down or, like, whatever it is. But... I don't know. I feel like I should probably start writing again, but I don't know. Like, I think, I think it's one of those things where when you're so used to doing something, you, um, you kind of get stuck in these habits, but like I'm unlearning, like I said, I keep saying it, like I'm unlearning these things, but I don't know, like, it's a growing process. And I feel like, you know, if you yourself have, like, any kind of qualms or if you're thinking about things too much or whatever it is, and, you know, like, I talk about self-diagnosing and people also self-medicate in many different ways to cope with whatever they think is wrong with them. And as long as you're not harming yourself, like, and I mean that physically, emotionally, mentally, like as long as you're not harming yourself and you're actually getting some kind of resolve, then it's, <laughs> it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we just have to go like, it's one day at a time type of thing. And I don't know, like, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's just very interesting because I think about like future generation, because even people my age that grew up here or back home who still have those same like I've met people who have that same ignorant mindset and it's like how do you how are you in this century this decade and you still think this way like this bakabush like backwards way of thinking and it's wrong on so many levels because you're closed off to the possibilities of 
alternative like illnesses and i talk about um illnesses and i always joke like you know we take a sick day off it's because your boss is like oh you have a cold or you twisted your ankle or you know something physical is wrong with you but no one ever thinks like what if i need a mental health day like is that included can you ask for that but literally like if i'm calling out for something it's just like literally i don't feel good (laughs) and i've done it like i don't feel good i literally stay home the whole day i don't do anything and i just you know recuperate but i feel like if you tell an employer that they're gonna be like what that's not a reason to stay home like go to work you know what i'm saying like you can't use your sick day just to stay home like they would they would consider that to be like a vacation day like that wouldn't be a sick day like sick approved quote unquote not by you know what i'm saying society or anything like that but um i don't know i feel like the more comfortable you are with not necessarily expressing yourself but accepting the things that you go through the easier it is to go through it like i um i'm not a religious person at all but I really like kind of guide try to live by the serenity prayer where it's like if I can't control it like I either accept it or distance myself from it like I want people I don't like to complain too much about the same thing and I get really bad like anxiety like if I know I can do something and I physically can't do it like I get frustrated like to like a really bad point and I have to take steps back sometimes in the section A. Either you can do this or you can't. Like, there's no point stressing over it. And that helps a lot <laughs> because I personally have, like, just a bad temper just just because. And, you know, learning self-control in that aspect is a big thing for me because a lot of times I just have to, like, stop, take a few breaths. And I'm like, okay, we're starting over. We're doing this again. And it's just going to go from there. But... I I don't know. I think about like schooling also like going to school in Jamaica like even like actually you see it here also like the whole raising your hand to go to the bathroom and things like that and you know calling kids up to the blackboard or whatever to solve problems and things like that. And I feel like I remember I sat in on my little sister's class when I went back last year or the year before. <laughs> and It's just like it brought back so many memories because I'm sitting in the classroom and it's like the same structure and it's the same like they call on like I think just for the fact that I was there, they called on my little sister just so that she can go up and, you know, saying do the thing and make sure that I know that she knows what she's doing or whatever the case is, like just to see how she's progressing in school. But there's always a lot of like picking on the one who doesn't raise their hand and it's not always necessarily that they don't know the answer or they don't know what's going on, but it's like social anxiety possibly. Maybe they're shy or maybe, you know, something like that. And I remember I've always been very soft-spoken. So like even in school in Jamaica, like that was, it was even worse then because, you know, this discipline level is like on a hundred, like you get beatings in school and it's if after they beat you to call your parent, your parent might come beat you too on top of it. So it's like, it was very strict and I was just, I've just always been very soft. So I don't know, it's the whole, you know, as a child, staying in a child's place, whatever, speaking, spoken to. But I've always been very soft spoken and like very shy. And even like talking in front of like multiple people, I've always been like, oh, no, I get all sweaty palms and, you know, like back of my neck gets hot and all that. And I knew like I was one of the like perfect example. Like I would know the answers. I'd be very well aware of what's going on in class. But I'm not raising my hand when they ask a question because I don't want to go up in front of all these people. Like for one time I literally like sat like stood in front of the class and I saw like the whole room like multiplied (laughs) and I swear like I was about to pass on. I was just like stood there like frozen. I was just like, I literally had to talk myself down. I was like 10 years old. I had to talk myself back and be like, okay, Janae, you know this. I literally just turned around, ignored everyone and like solved the problem. But, it's not always that, you know, successful. Some people like literally just freeze up. Some might pass out. And it's one of those things that like it kind of, I don't want to say enforces, but it, it adds on to like 
social anxiety because kids are horrible. <laughs> like a teacher calls on you and they don't know what's going on with you. They don't know if you know the answer. But if you clam up, they automatically think, aha, you don't know the answer. You're dumb. Da, 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 da. And it's the laughing and pointing. And you know what I'm saying in some institutions that's allowed or not allowed, but it's more tolerated than others where some you can't do that at all. And it's like, whether you know the answer or not, you might still beat yourself up just for climbing up when it's like, I knew it. Why didn't I just do it? <laughs> you know, it's it's just one of those things. And then let's say it gets back to your parent. Then they're like, you're not paying attention to school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just turns into one whole whirlwind. And that can always like, and then it just, it just spirals into something else. And I feel like the way that they teach you about like sex ed and stuff like that in school, they should also teach you about like self-care like i'm always gonna say that they should teach you about you know writing checks and managing your bank accounts and all these types of things too but the things that really shape the person you are and like actually who you are as a person these things get so ignored because like i said earlier it's a structure like you have to do <laughs> what it is to survive and survival for most people is paying bills taking care of family make sure you can eat have somewhere to sleep and that's literally it. Like, that's it. And I remember for the longest time after, like, I was living on my own, a lot of people was like, oh, my God, you you know, you take care of yourself and you're doing good. Like, you're good. And it's like, no. <laughs> you know saying? Like, I was depressed for a really long time, like, in serious depression. And nobody knew because, well, of course, my best friend knew, but... Outside of that, I was like, oh, you, you're saying everything's good. You're working and, you know, da, 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 you got your own place. And it's like, OK, <laughs> that's all that matters to most people. So it doesn't matter what emotional trials you're going through. As long as you're financially stable and you look like you're, quote unquote, put together, that's pretty much it. And a lot of people, even who are dealing with things mentally, they feel like that too. Like they try to ignore the things that's going on with them and focus on in a way that's kind of okay, but not really because if you're going through serious issues then you need to learn to accept it. Like I'm one of those people, like something will bother me. And if I say something about it, I feel a twinge better. Like literally just saying it will make it better. Like just, okay, I feel like shit today. It's like, okay, I got that out. You know what I'm saying? I can think about something else now because that's not something else that's swirling around in my head. And literally, like, 